So we know that Georgia's offense scored a ton of points in the national championship game against TCU, but also that defense didn't give up many points. I'm Dane Young. That's Brent Rollins. Film don't lie here from UGASports.com. Brent, Georgia's defense really helped give the Bulldogs a bit of a short field, kind of help out. But as we're going to show here in, in this film, don't lie, TCU did not do itself any favors. No, they didn't. Their plan, ugh. Very disappointing from a plan perspective, After, especially after watching the Ohio State game. Like, if you're an offense, and I get that their offense is different from Ohio State's and it's built differently, but you would think you would try to take some of the concepts that, that they did, and they just didn't. They ran their stuff and tried to do what they do, and it just didn't work out well. But much – I mean, Georgia gave up a few plays here and there, but much like the Oregon game, when you combine the turnovers with what Georgia was being able to do on offense, i.e. whatever it wanted, and we've got videos – on that that you can go back and look at. But when you combine those two things, <laughs> you get new toys. <laughs> so uh, you're going to see me you get domination point at the, uh, performance. You're going to see me look down more than ever because we have a touch screen now that we're able to do some things on our film review. So, of course, we wait until after the national championship to do an upgrade in our equipment. That's just how it goes. Uh, so we have new toys that we're going to play with here. Merry Christmas to Dane. Yeah, Merry Christmas to the young household. <laughs> Uh, so let's start here, Brent. Um, scheme wise, formation wise, anything that stood out early against TCU? Because we're going to look at their first seven plays from scrimmage on the Horn Frogs yeah. offense. And really, the, the whole entirety of the game was decided in these first seven plays. And the biggest thing that you saw early was how Georgia rushed them three, rushing three, dropping eight. And what's amazing about this play is you get pressure. You cover well, and you get pressure. The QB breaks the pocket, and this is one where the quarterback's just not good enough. I mean, Lassiter on the scramble drill pulls up. He's beat. Like, he's the guy's behind him. You put that on the, on the receiver, that's a humongous play on the very first play of the game. And Duggan just doesn't, doesn't make the throw. And that's – I mean, it's one of the ones where you kind of look – when you look back at the day and look at some of the things, yes, he had a great season – but there are certain instances where it's just his overall accuracy was not there. And it showed massively in this game. I even thought that based on the quality of quarterback that Georgia saw most weeks, even in terms of talent, maybe not always accuracy. I even go back to Kent state. Like that was a really good quarterback performance just from a team that didn't have nowhere near the talent to compete with the Georgia. But this is a team that saw, uh, Anthony Richardson have one of the best games of his career. Obviously, Hendon Hooker has some deep ball things that he can do. Uh, C.J. Stroud is a different world yeah. from this in terms of quarterback play. I, I have to think it's just glaring that Georgia's quarterback play and overall talent and Tennessee's or uh, TCU's quarterback play and overall talent it just didn't belong in the same field here. And so, yeah, I get that Max Duggan was second in the Heisman. I, I don't see how. I mean, he put up a lot of numbers and he did, and did it and played well and, and you know, did the sort of had the Heisman moments. But one other thing here is you got a guy who's coming back next year, putting the center on absolute skates. And Mr. Nazir Stackhouse right in the middle of the, uh, of the formation. He <laughs> the center almost ends up in Duggan's lap uh, on this play. The thing that I get excited about and thinking in terms of next year is what happens in the center of the field here. Inside linebackers at Georgia next year and beyond. If you want to know why Glenn Schumann is going to be a head coach in college football in kind of short order, think about what Georgia lost to the NFL draft last year with N'Kobe Dean, Quay Walker, Channing Tindall. This year, solid, maybe not quite up to that par. It's hard to get to that level. When you start projecting ahead to the talent that Georgia has at inside linebacker, you have to start pushing some of those guys to the outside and saying that room is just bursting at the seams. And I saw that in this game a lot. I think Smile Munden is special, and we'll see yes. that in this film. Yep, I, I I agree. But again, like the, the like much like Ohio State, by the way, in Missouri games, QBs made big plays out of the pocket. Boom, you you come up on the ball and you just you got to make the throw, and he didn't. First play of the game. Let's go to the second play of the game. This is another one where it's just like, okay, please tell me this is not your plan. There's no – rarely. I can't state busted one, but that's about it. 
but rarely in since Kirby Smart has been at Georgia is horizontal going horizontally as an offense a good thing. And when you see this as your second play, and I know you want to get your receiver, your big time receiver, a touch, but there's a lot of things that stand out on this play. One, the QB, I, mechanically, I think there's he's got issues, and I think there's he's going to have to work on some of those issues with how he, how the ball drops, and I think he can tighten up, be quicker. Two, I have no idea what the slot receiver is doing and why he's not trying to block Starks. And three, Georgia's speed is a little bit different. Uh oh, indeed. Uh oh, indeed. And this is one play where, like, if you just play it sort of live from the start, and if I'm an NFL draft evaluator, I this play tells me as much about Jalen Carter as some of his great plays on the interior, because he starts on one side of the formation, is wrapping as a pass rusher to the offense's left, sees the play, and then hustles his tail out and gets involved. Like that's. That's what you want to see from potential top overall picks. And like you said, Mr. Munden getting out there quick. Like, it's just, it's like, why are you doing this? Especially into the field, into the boundary, like into the short side of the field. I get, like I said, I get you want to get the big guy a touch, which ended up, by the way, being his only touch of the game. This just reminded me that TCU does not see the speed that Georgia has very often because this play and i'd have to go back and watch more but th- this probably got them four or five yards a lot of times throughout the season or more and linebackers could not cover horizontally to get over here yeah so georgia I mean, could. that's just that's borderline easy for munden to get to get there and make that play for just a three-yard game even bullard coming on the backside here like he would have stopped this from being a big play because none of the blockers got down to him or, so, or the guy in the slot didn't attempt to block anyone. He just thought maybe somebody's going to run with me. Maybe somebody runs with me. Please run with me. No. Didn't happen. All right. And, so that leaves them third down. Third and long. And this is, again, what does Georgia do? They rush three. So early on, it's like, okay, QB, are you good enough to beat us? And, again, you're not. This is a first down. Like, this should be a first down on third and 12. Open. You can't, there's a guy clearing out the bottom that you can't see because of the all 22 that's there, but this is just a bad mechanical throw. He's, he's already rushed. Like his lower body doesn't get as much in that throw and it ends up short, but that should be a first down. This play is when I thought, Oh, George is in good shape because in these kinds of games, if you give Georgia this, then the rest of it's going to be a lot harder. That, yep. That's what I thought. And you look at Duggan when he wasn't blitzed, which was like 15, I think 15 dropbacks, 16 dropbacks. Eight of 15, 98 yards, two picks, 34.6 passing grade. Like it just wasn't good enough. I want to give a shout out here quickly to Keely Ringo at the top of the screen here. Tough assignment to come across the middle as he has to do. And frankly, this is probably – if, if protection holds up a little bit better, this may end up being the, the window for a pass here, but protection well, is gone. And th- ideally, if you want to get the first down here, the, thro- the, the throw is the middle of the field. I think it's this one. The big guy on Starks, but he's, he just doesn't have enough time. Yeah. He's got to get rid of it. But it's, it's like, yeah, it, the guy's open. Yeah, hit the throw and it's first down. It's later, later that they should hit Starks. I'll hit that one later. If you're one of the best quarterbacks in the country, you hit that throw. C.J. Stroud hits that throw. I promise you that. Yes. So they get the ball back. Georgia scores, and they think, "Oh, let's go a little QB run game, or let's go a little read play." And Georgia shows a good look for it. But and Munden, what's amazing about this play, and I think they showed it on the broadcast, how he sort of baited him into this, gave him a give read or a keep read going down the line tight and then quickly redirects to tackle him. Like, that's just great play. And then also, by the way, even if he gives the ball off, Jalen Carter absolutely swallows the running back and, you know, maybe (laughs) puts him into the ground because it's just like that would have been ball right there. Quickness on the interior, but again, you think, all right, so my plan early was just a little drop back game, horizontal, 
oh, I don't like that. Now I'm going to go mesh QB run. Like it, going horizontally does not work against this defense since Kirby Smart's been there. It's just not a thing. So this is as the snap is happening uh, in our clip. One second, 1.16 seconds. I'm going to try to pause this at 2.16 seconds and just see what it looks like after one second has elapsed and what Tennessee, or what I keep saying Tennessee, what TCU had to deal with. All right. It's a little bit before this, like that line of scrimmage is dominated. And look, now it's, now it's back here. Yep. That's you cannot win football games that way. Like the only thing that can happen there is a catch and throw and pray. Yep. And, and because like the rest of this is a me- unless maybe if you have Michael Vick or something, but he's not that. But Michael Vick in his prom, maybe he can do some weird stuff. But so now you're second and long. Horses. So now you're second and long though, and like okay, what do we want to do again? Oh, let's go horizontal. Like <laughs> Munden's just like, hey, sure, I'll take this easy tackle. Like that's too easy. The tackle has no chance to get out to him. Jalen Carter, like, or was it Walt Towers making that play? If if Munda doesn't like, it's just what are you doing? It's good leverage by Bullard, by the way, making making him uh, go outside or making him stay inside, and, and Bullard staying outside. And this is just this is easy money pursuit drill stuff for them. And I mean that's that's why, I, like, for me personally, I'm like, okay, your plan is this. When you just saw the previous game, a team attacked vertically in the 10 to 20 yard area consistently, max protect, do those kind of things, outside zone running game, some unique run concepts, and you go with your base stuff and try to go quick screen. Uh uh, just not happening. I mean, I always say look at the space and look what Georgia allows TCU to have here. And it's all right here. And I guess TC is not confident enough that it could attack it. And maybe they're right. Maybe they didn't have time to attack it because that stuff takes time to develop. Now we get third and long. Let's let's see. All right, George what's our plan now? Time to develop. So this is one where I, I think Duggan misreads this a little bit because he wants to go to uh, Quint, Quentin Johnson at the top of the screen. But Johnson tries to be physical with Bullard, and Bullard is a little physical back, and he loses his balance. But by the way, it's still third and long. Your 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 route is how many yards short of the first down? Like because he, he's stopping and working outside. Maybe he's thinking, all right, we're gonna push the ball to the outside and get a broken tackle kind of thing. But that's bad. You're just running. This is a this is a mesh concept with a guy with the ball and the throw to make. And this is where it's like, okay, Kirk Cousins City in a way. You got in a way, and he gets sort of. Harped on for being a – there's a first down right here. There's a first down throw to be made right before that. Just back up just a hair before – or even right right there, right before he releases the ball. All right. Right there, like in the middle of the field. Like Starks is beat. Starks is two steps behind the guy, and he's right on the first down marker. Right there. With, with – I mean, the only help is way back here, so you're right. Anything right here. Is the first down? You just missed it. Seventh, and, it, and that's and the other thing is, and by the way, look where we're going again. We're going horizontally, but this Georgia does a great job on the previous play, and this is a theme as well. You show you show a middle of the field open two man sort of two man type look, and then now you go middle of the field close with somebody in the middle of the field, and you got more of a cover one like consistently going. Switching between middle field open, middle field close, covers reads for for Duggan. And then we go back to let's go horizontal again. Why not? That works. So now well, they tried vertical nothing. last time. It didn't work. Or, so. Or it's got the yeah, fumble. Seven, seven zip now. And then boom, fumble. And this is there's so much good and bad, like good from Smith and Bullard. Horrible from the receiver. Oh my gosh, what is that? Like, how much time? How much do we talk about? Go where the guy's going to be. Like, if he, if Bullard goes inside of Johnson at the slot here, and that guy, by the way, six four, six five, you know, two something, two hundred something pounds, and Bullard just gives around him like he's nothing. 
But if he if he goes inside, the ball's going outside of him. Who cares? Stay on the defender's outside shoulder. But Bowler deeks him and is just like, boom, okay. I think this is a really athletic move here. It like, is. Bullard had a, his best game ever in, in a variety of ways. I get that. But, like, th- this is just some – we talk about backyard football stuff on offense a lot. Just, like, this is a basketball player avoiding a guy in transition. Boop. Quick move. Great closing speed by Smith. Ball's out. And Bullard does a heck of a job getting back on it. You know I like my celebrations, and there's a pretty epic one here. <laughs> I missed my telestration on that one. Stand by. I believe this is Zion Logue. Yes. A little bit of this right here. Well, the other way, maybe. Yeah. He sees I mean, that. He, he sees this coming. And that's just fight, by the way, from Bullard. Like, he's is on the ground. Right? He he puts – he you know, slides almost into the into the turf, gets back for the ball. That's just – that guy's a – he's just a football player. And he's so fun to watch. Earned, earned the – Earn the uh, player of the game award in this one. Well, he's been good against the run all year. His increased level in the playoff against the pass was something Georgia needed. And frankly, it's two straight years where the star position has elevated its play against the pass at the right time of the season. Yep. William Poole saved his best for last last year and then Bullard as well this year. Now we get the mix up, the one big play. And, you know, it's it's pretty clear that – there, there's just a miscommunication. Hey, you stay in, and then Bowler goes in a little bit. It's hard to see sort of that, like they're pointing. Like he's, I think he's pointing and telling Keeley to stay outside. Uh, and then he, you know, it's just a miscommunication, and that happens. The biggest thing for me is you fought and got back and prevented a touchdown. Now, granted, the throw s- slowed the receiver down a little bit. But, you know, you instantly got back, hustled back, made them have to work for the score, which they did. And they, you know, they actually ran the ball well uh, inside in the rare area right there on this, on this drive. But miscommunication. And we'll, we'll talk. So this is what's interesting about this is TCU had a bunch of plays in the game that were 10 yards, exactly 10 yards. They had two over 10 yards. This was one of them. And it's just a bust. That's all. You want to you and you want to guess when the other one happened? What the score was? Is it the very end? Fifty-two to seven when the yeah. other one happened. All right, and Make this down score. I was a little disappointed in this because this was the literally the exact same formation, play, action, everything as what TCU scored against Michigan, and I, I was curious with the call because. One blitzing linebacker, two, you're you had, I think it was Logue, maybe, that was sort of slanting left, right to his left. Those guys kind of run into, into each other, and you just you're outnumbered big time. So I, I was kind of shocked at how they played this, given the fact that I would have thought preparation for that exact formation, given that they did that to Michigan, would have things a little more, you know, there's too much weak side action here, like all the players on the weak side. I mean, this is know your personnel that like the the easiest thing you can give them is Duggan running into the end zone. Make him throw it. Yep. Make him throw it to somebody and see what happens. And um, look, it's it's hard to do. You get down to the right. It's oh, yeah. 11 and 11 Especially down the, QB the threat. yard line. And yeah. the, when the QB is a run threat, it's, it makes everything easier for the offense. And we yeah. saw that for Georgia. All right. So now this is this is an interesting point in the game. Let's go ahead and just pause this one here before we before we get to it. Because what has happened at this point? So 17, it's yeah, 17 to seven at this point. And T so TCU's got the ball back. And hey, let's stay in the game. The previous three plays, they'd gained 27 yards in the previous three plays. Two runs and then a quick throw to the big tight end and 10 plays. So hey, we're rolling. We're running the ball. We're having some, some success. And what do they do? They get greedy. And what happens when you get greedy? Georgia bites back because this is 100% a covered sack because they max protect here. Seven guys in protection. For some reason, I, I think the receiver got blown off, blown up at the line of scrimmage a little too much, and now they got two guys in the same spot, basically. And 
kind of the deep middle area. So, you know, you, your two guys are covering their two guys. You don't have to give help at all. And you're trying to take a shot and you just get nothing. And Georgia's, you know, Michael Williams does a good job of keep fighting. Linebacker comes in a little late, wins. But again, that's a max protect. You try to take a shot, but you were rolling, like running the ball, bleeding clock. Like, this is not something to me you do when you're trying to avoid getting absolute annihilated. And you should see that that's kind of coming. But here's the other key. Pause it when uh, Johnston gets right around the 40, the actual number. Like right in there. So what do you what would what did Ohio State show you that to beat this defense? What do you do? You max protect one. They did that. Excuse the holding piece. But max protect and your route combinations go one way and then use their rules against you to sort of stop and go the other way. To me, Ohio, what would Ohio State do with Harrison Jr. right here? He would take two steps, stop on a dime, and then come back towards the, the 40 and have all of the space in the world to work because they know one's coming down and going to play leverage to the, to the field side and they'll have space going back the other way. Like why you didn't sort of – that's just, again, that's the plan part for me where, okay, you think you're going to get something. And I think they probably thought they'd get the guy who got pushed off the line at the bottom of the screen more so holding the safety and maybe get some uh, – the, the slot guy over the, over the top. But, you know, Georgia's just more, more physical. I mean, yeah, I, I think that they were hoping that this is where they could throw and get the first down here. And kind of use these as clear outs for across or across the middle. Georgia and Georgia's sitting in zone. And they, they yeah. didn't and allow a window. Last, for that. last are just sitting there waiting for that ball to be thrown. So you're saying that he should stop and go back up to the 40. Like yeah, use their you're, rules you're against he him. He should stop here and then Boom. kind of camp back out because all the momentum is sending him back here. Yeah. And it's it's the coverage rules. Like you got to cover that sort of deep third. And this guy's coming down as the sort of you know playing that that middle of the field, rat, robber, whatever you term, but still stop and use it against them and get the ball to your best player. I, I love your point, though, just about how greedy this is. That When you've like, just had a nine, like three plays for 27 yards, yeah. 10, 9, 10, or something like that. Was, you you like have 10, Georgia 9, as much on its heels as Georgia was the whole game. Yep. Why did you think that all of a sudden it's going to be – couple of these deeper 15, 20 yard routes. Well, and also just, and by the way, let's go back to second, second and long. Now, what do we go back to? Hmm. It's second and long. We've done it twice already. What, what, what are we doing here? I guess. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sweet. We're going to go, we're going to go horizontal again. Yeah. And then pff, just last that are being physical. I think it's just, if that's your second long plan, sorry. It's just not going to work against this defense. Too physical. Like, the, the, watch the dude in the purple undershirt here, seven. Like, I'm, I wonder if Coach 30 got – I didn't watch his video for this game, but you can't really see it. But he olays the absolute – I don't know what <laughs> – out of Bullard. And effort-wise, you're just like, oh, not 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 great here. And he's just kind of like, right oh, here. yeah. And Bullard's mm. right here. Yeah. And Lasser's there. It's just, again – Horizontal, bad idea, very bad idea. Future, future offenses, bad idea. Don't do it unless your guys I mean, are just better. They and that's really the yard here. So now we're third and seventeen, and that's and we flip the so the end of the quarter, third and seventeen, down seventeen to seven. And you're thinking, okay, get what you can get. Georgia does a good job here of I think disguising coverage again. They show middle of the field open and then instantly rotate to sort of. Cover three, middle of the field close. Stark sprints. He's on the championship logo. Sprints back to the middle of the field. The other two safeties are now down, inserting down into down into coverage. And Duggan does a good job here. And he's basically reading, all right, am I taking the out or am I taking the, the stick route? Throws the stick, positive. Now you're fourth and seven. And do you remember what TCU did right here? Punted. Like, No. No, 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 and no. There's no world like the my notes running this game. The instant they punted on this play after this play, game over. Like wrote it down in the notes because you can, you have to realize the game that you're in that you're in plus territory. And there, the other thing, by the way, Jalen Walker, he came as an inside linebacker, 
played a lot on the edge, and he's on the right edge here playing against the left tackle. It, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him moving forward. Does he – I think he becomes eventually that Tyndall role where third down he's uh, edge, he's in linebacker something. He's in the linebacker – normal linebacker rotation that maybe he's the third inside linebacker, especially with uh, Marshall transferring out. I think he can cover better than Tyndall, though. That, that was always his liability. And – but – what he's done at the edge, like in this game, I think he, like four pressures in this game, but he just whips the left tackle right here. Quick inside move right in Duggan's face. But yeah, punt. That, that's over. kind of the point that I was saying earlier was that like with the quantity of talent at inside linebacker and, and I mean, it's, with the incoming it's, guys and you got, got some incoming guys rating. too, because like two or three of those guys could end up finding their way in the field this year, especially if it, some blowouts um i look at it and i say georgia has a wealth of talent at inside linebacker they have talented edge but like that's probably a rebuilding spot a little bit and i think walker jalen walker moving out there is something that george is at least going to try yeah and especially like they did with him the latter half most of the season is where he's the th he's the edge guy in the third down package yeah he's just yeah, moved just Quick, explosive, from all accounts, very smart player. Now we got the Bullard's first good one here. And this is, again, what do we show? We show middle of the field closed, goes down into, I think it's Chris Smith, maybe goes down into uh, kind of that Tampa 2 middle of the field cover roll that Bullard's now the other safety with Starks. And pressure here, the double, you, you, show a six-man pressure. They have seven guys that stay to block. You only bring four. You get pressure. Holy cow, Duggan. Cow, cow, why can you not make this throw? Like, th this is – you're not an elite quarterback. You're not a top-level college quarterback if you can't hit this one. Nope. Like, it, it, there's – I mean, it, it's just clear that the everything about the pressure of the game and the situation and what was going on – and the speed, I think, threw him off. It just did. Because he does a good job of managing the pocket like there. Reset your feet, doom, and boom, and then just throw it and just chunks of – and great job by Bowler reading, making a play on the ball and not necessarily focusing on the receiver as much because this is open. This is a huge play. If we can praise Bullard all we want to. This is a really Miss. poor mistake from TCU. He took advantage, don't get me wrong, but – this is not some crazy, amazing play that he made against a good play. And and I love Dumas Johnson's effort. Like that that guy's effort is nonstop. Like let's dive over the running back, roll over, get up, still get at the feet of the quarterback, and disrupt him enough to where he's not fully comfortable. And you get that play. Like that's that's the little things that matter. Love that effort. I have another celebration that we need to focus on here. <laughs> Who we get this time? And let me see where it's coming in. Little, little Darnell esque, yeah. That's like that's like Darnell uh, uh, again when Bra Bowers scored a long TD run. I'm trying Swimming to make sure arms. I can identify who this is. It's a little bit blurry. I think it's Munden. I think it is too. <clears throat> yeah. Just kind of like swimming through, like yeah. Oh, yeah. I see what you did there. I love those. little pressure off the edge here. And, again, the, the route is on at this point, but you're setting yourself up for – like, this is one where how much fun is it to watch Carter and, and Bear Alexander work? And what's interesting is they work so differently. Like, when you watch Bear, and it, it, I think Jalen Carter's listed at 6'3", and Bear is listed at 6'3", Carter looks just way bigger to me. I, I don't know – he just does. And I've never sort of stood side by side with him. But Bear, Carter really is a long stride guy and takes just sort of big, powerful strides because he, he knows his power. He's never going to get knocked off. Bear works very sort of short, choppy, quick feet, and he's always moving and always moving forward. And, again, that guy's going to be him, Stackhouse. Those, those are your two. Like, Bear takes the Carter, the Jalen Carter role next year. Again, another good celebration at the end. 
<laughs> at this point, Georgia like really it's, knew this was done. They were celebrating. Yeah. Yep. Because it sets up the next play where it's like, okay, TC, you're going to get greedy. And by the way, he miss he misreads this as well, the QB, in terms of the the coverage. Uh, like this is picked potentially the, either way in terms of where it goes. Because Lasseter might pick it as well. Georgia's playing one of the variations where they got man man on the bottom, this man to the to the to the boundary on the bottom of the screen, zone to the top of the screen. Duggan doesn't see it. And just, you know, this is like what uh, McCarthy threw to TCU in the semifinal game. I mean, you just can't like that situation for TCU. Not with the level of athletes that, that they have here. And if this is anything, third long again. Right. And, and look, yeah, it's third long. Right before the like, half. If, if there's something to be gotten here, a lesson for TCU, it's that you needed to try to attack Georgia in the middle with the hashes. And they didn't have the horses to do it. Nope. And Georgia knew it. And Bullard makes another great play on the ball. And forever sort of stamps himself as one of those PT peers, as Dick Vitale would say. Probably earned himself some NIL money, too, if I had to, I, I mean, to gamble. I mean, you would, you would hope so. I would think so. That's what we have for the first half of Georgia and TCU. What I'll say is we do have a video that's coming about the second half of Georgia and TCU, Georgia's defense in it. It's a lot of backups. It's a lot of plays that in the grand scheme of things, people won't remember. But I do think it's interesting to see what Georgia was doing because they left the starters in there for a lot of the, th the third quarter. Most of the third, yeah, basically the third quarter. And then fourth quarter, obviously, was you know celebration time. It was Hollywood party. And it was Georgia was the super curtain team. calls. <laughs> uh, when you start projecting ahead, there is a chance that Georgia, for the second consecutive season, has the number one pick in the NFL draft with a defensive lineman. That would be noteworthy historically. When you start projecting ahead to uh, other defensive players selected, Keely Ringo, I'm seeing him probably second round pick at this point. We'll see if he I think runs he gets in the fast, first. If he I runs he that gets... fast, he will. Yeah, I think he's I think he's going to show up at the combine and be like right around 200 pounds, be lighter than he's listed and be and look quicker and he'll run like 436, 437 in the 40 and everybody's going to be like rare athlete, that's a first round athlete. Christopher Smith, he'll be drafted somewhat high, I don't think first round, but he'll be a, a valuable NFL player. And then the guys coming back for Georgia with Munden and Dumas Johnson and Lassiter, and Bullard, and Bear Alexander, Starks. and Jalen Walker. Georgia's defense next season, especially against the schedule that it's facing, I don't know that there's a game-breaker like a Jalen Carter on that team. At least I, yeah. I don't see that, or even someone it, yeah. as versatile as a Trayvon Walker. But I'll just say in terms of like total dudes – George is going to be right there as one of the best defenses in the country yet again. And that's I think exactly Michael Williams is one that might take that leap as well in year two and be an absolute force. He can. He can. And I, I think Munden will end up being that. I know it's hard for inside linebackers to get selected high like that, but he's, he's going to end up being one of the best in the country at that. And, and, and the beautiful piece is we get to watch them, a lot of these guys that are coming back, get reps in the second half in yeah. the end of a national championship game. Like we, much like we did with the offense. It was obvious, and Georgia said as much, that the defense that they practiced against was better than the defense that, that they played offensively. I think the inverse was also true. Georgia's offense was better than what Georgia's defense played in the title game, if that makes sense. Scout team. Yes. Yep. Yeah. The, the players that were Georgia's backup on offense gave them as good of a look as they needed, and they probably performed better against Georgia's defense than TCU and, did. And much like anything else, once you're you know you're an offensive coordinator, you're a defensive coordinator, whatever, and you get the just utter smack in the face where nothing feels like it's working at all, it's it's just hard. And yeah. they didn't make it any easier on themselves. 
blowout win, took offense and defense and everything, Georgia, back-to-back national champions. We will continue Film Don't Lie in the second half. In the second version of this, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel to make sure you get that into your feed. We are the most popular Georgia Bulldogs YouTube channel, and we're very proud of that. For Brent Rollins, I'm Dane Young. 